Okay. Hello. Can can you uh, can those online hear us now? I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks for reminding. So, uh, uh, in the afternoon, uh, we're basically going to do some hands-on uh, project exercise. So, in this case, I'm just uh, asking uh, um, GPT to do some, uh, let's see. So, just a list of uh, open source Python tools for better data retrieval. And then I ask you to provide a collab example to do that. Let's see whether it works out. Okay. <clears throat> this is to retrieve data from Chattanooga in the last five years. Wow. Uh, if this works, uh, this use takes us uh, the whole, whole uh, half a day or something to do it. Uh, no, it didn't work. Uh, there's an error. Uh, okay, this is actually doesn't happen very often. So, chatting with you, Python, there is a type error. Uh -huh. So, this, this actually error seems to be very simple because the date time frame didn't check. This error, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it actually make this error. I should use the coding. I should use the coding one. <clears throat> if I should use the coding pilot, maybe it work better. I use the generic, uh, not the uh, code pilot. Can you say, let's see. <laughs> Fix the errors in the following code. I can't test in the code. I didn't tell it what error it is. I, if I tell it, maybe it will fix the error. Wow. It fixed the error and I just found it in the code. I think I spent less than five minutes on this. <laughs> I used to teach this at least two hours, something. Yeah. Even with sample code, I'll go over this and teach it, yeah. And this is actually start completely from scratch. Really. <clears throat> yeah, I, I started to provide a list of open source Python code, and then I say, pick the two most popular and reliable, and then I say, provide the collab code, <clears throat> using one of the above library to get a better data was had an opportunity in the last five years. Uh, but because I'm not using a coding version, so it has a bug. And then I just uh, asked the code pilot to fix that bug, and it's now runs. And, and this I used to spend at least probably two hours, to, even with the existing code, to, to go over this. Uh, of course, you can have to tell whether it's correct or not. It doesn't mean. But how do we verify this? <clears throat> we have the data. How how can we verify this? This is that quite important because actually we just the main thing. Right? <laughs> how do we verify this for this data? How how 
what do you think you can verify? Yeah, your man, you have to buy the house. <laughs> we can verify this actually with with, with observation, right? So if you had, you, uh, let's see what's the most recent data. <clears throat> so uh, if I, <clears throat> uh, Focusing on the weather in the most uh, recent week and uh, verify it with a uh, weather report data that can be obtained separately. <clears throat> But uh, in the past, when I do this, I just Google the weather of a particular location and then compare the record with my own uh, code. It's a bit tedious, <laughs> especially if you do a large scale worldwide. But I just pick a, a few spots, uh, Chattanooga, New York, Sydney, Australia, Beijing, China. I pick a few spots and verify them. If they are correct, I know. I assume other places are also correct. So I had to pick Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere because apparently the GPS handled them different. So to make, uh, so I picked a few cities in, in the Northern part, a few cities in the Southern part. <clears throat> this is actually really matters for plant size or any ecology because the climate change is a big thing. Uh, this is actually uh, some very large ecological data I use to analyze. I, I do some long-term correlation study. So. <clears throat> okay, let's see whether this works or not. Uh, yeah, the, now the coding exercise just become copy and paste. Uh, Wow. Uh, you definitely generate a scatter plot of comparison. Okay. Let's, honestly, I didn't know what they're doing. Uh, let me <clears throat> see this. So what is, uh, <laughs> excuse me, what is the explanation? <clears throat> Mission. <clears throat> but which other data is there? Uh, I see, I see. It manually put some data randomly. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm glad I checked it. Uh, so it basically says I should find those data manually, put it there. Uh, <clears throat> and this uh, in the US there is also this not public in Celsius, so I can Google uh, weather Chattanooga. Fantasy last question by uh, zip code data that can be. Retrieve by Taisa. Let's let's try that first. Uh, <laughs> no, it had an error. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to you the code again. Um, <clears throat> wow, you're not wrong. Yeah, so the generic <laughs> GPT with a Python context GPT doesn't make a difference. Yet. Whatever uh, uh, error is affects it. So the question is, uh, what is this data? Explain more on um, <clears throat> oh, this is MIC open data. Oh, so this must be MIC. Yeah. Is that MIC distribution? That's okay. Yeah. Um, data City of New York. Open data for all New York data vector and open Okay. UAP ITBN, what is that? Uh, <clears throat> wow, the six parts are even. It's a project called Tree Cut. I, I, I can't let you just explore this on your own because this is something I've never seen before myself. So I just got found it. Uh, but apparently, it does have some interesting data related to uh, food resources. Uh, what are the attributes? SPC, Latin, SPC, some latitude, latitude. Yeah, so basically, now you, you want to figure out what are those uh, attributes are. It does look like it has the latitude, latitude. Also, this is a very detailed uh, GIS data. <clears throat> and then you have the Bing BBL census track, council district. So if I, if you are interested in the, the social economic uh, or whatever uh, other things like maybe food access, social equity, economic factor, that seems to be a lot. This is also interesting, tree ID. 
I would be really surprised. That's the ID for a specific tree. <laughs> so, what does tree ID mean? So, block ID. <clears throat> so, so, what do you think we should do? Uh, <clears throat> So let me just try this. Uh, yes, I'm going to show you some of the uh, see whether I can use a bit more complicated prompt to do this. So <clears throat> it turned out that when you talk to ChatGPT according to some expert, the best prompt should be written in XML format. Not natural language. So, what that suggests, even though it's called natural language model, it is still not optimized for actual natural language. It is still had the structured language, like programming language, still had a better performance. So, I'm going to try using the XML tag to do that. So, so so I'm going to say this is what uh, data output. That's data output. <clears throat> and then say uh, the following data output is from uh somewhere uh, part of the project of NYC open data portal. Explain the <clears throat> column names. Do you think this will work? Such as the ID, block ID. That is, oh, that doesn't look like tree. Is it a live health? So it's not a food access. It's, it's, uh, well, what's the question I asked? That's a public on food distribution. Oh, maybe those trees are food. So if they are food trees, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Sorry. Why trees become food? <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, health experience. Okay, let's see what I come on. Huh, interesting. It does say unique identifier assigned to each tree. Oh, this is a very interesting case. <laughs> so, It, the, the, this data set is part of Tree Count 2015 Street Tree Sensor, the project of a new park and immigration club on the other hand. Urban forestry management and environmental research. Okay, so this is not particularly about food. So that seems to be a, but I guess it's the other data that we can use, but it's not uh, exactly about food. This way. Maybe that's food pantries that that seem to be oh vegan specific available. Website like healthy cow. Healthy cow here. Okay, I think I'm going to just let you explore other things, yeah. Uh, well, it, it sh shows the usefulness of ChatGPT and also the unusefulness of ChatGPT at the same time. So, 
uh, I did ask for food veganism, but they come out with trees. So. Even though it's workable, useful data, but it's not what the uh, original intention is. Okay. 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 But if you want to continue, we can also say, uh, write a Python code to show this tree distribution in NYC map. That's actually will be a, almost like New York Times figure. If you have a, they also have the city, other things. I'm not sure whether Python can do this or not. I, I don't know. Let's wait and see. <laughs> so, uh, I see a lot of R code to do this, but I haven't tried Python. Okay, let's see. I'd be really impressed if you can do this. Wow. I'm really impressed. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is really cool, isn't it? Uh, uh, but then he's also said that yeah, that's a few trees in New York City. <laughs> I don't know what the criteria for trees. That's not a lot of trees. Uh, so that's the trees that they sampled, I guess. So, uh, it is impressive. Uh, we generated this. <laughs> so, uh, impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, do that part. What is this thing? Good point. Okay, let's let's copy this. <laughs> Good point. Thank you. Uh, sweetheart. Uh, let's say. What is this neighborhood in NYC? Queens. Okay. Oh, wow. This is helpful, isn't it? <laughs> good idea. Suggest good suggestion. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it is interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's Queens. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no one here is in from New York to verify this. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess you can on Google Map to to to, to check it. <laughs> so, but it is it is uh, impressive. Yeah. So. Okay. What what other things we want to try? Does someone have their own data, or your own project, anything? Else? Uh, this is already planned. <laughs> do, we, do we have some idea of plan science or plan project you want to work on? Hard to get it to analyze on your data right now, but it's not. It's like getting previously sometimes. Oh, to... very nice. Uh, actually, I I have a written one already there, but let's try this. Very good. Uh, it, it will be easier if you go what kind of audio data you want to work on. Uh, just the recording of what my friend says it in the work. And because it is the tonal language, I try to make it like a pitch draft. Interesting. Uh, can you share your screen? Uh, how it, how it works? Uh, Happy about that. Okay, I think I rather <laughs> answer the wrong question. Uh, there's something called Darwin something. Uh, it's 
Yes, Divan Core. Yeah, it is listed there, Divan Core. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so. Explain. Uh, in fact, uh, on your app, you probably have something. Uh, if you walk around, you have a species. Uh, I forgot the app. Uh, I used to uh, use that uh, even myself. Uh, when you have a, but if you walk around, uh, one thing you, you want to be aware at Tennessee is try to avoid poison ivy or poison trees, right? I don't know. I cannot tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just point my phone. <laughs> this is poison. <positive. laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> assuming there's a cell phone signal. <laughs> so, when you when you uh, uh walk around the uh, in the city, probably okay. But once you go off the off the road uh, in the trail, sometimes it do happen. I right? in in my when my daughter playing soccer. There is one side of the soccer field. Nobody noticed. I use the phone to say those are all poison highway. <laughs> so, so when the soccer ball uh, rolled into it, even uh, we use the stick to take the ball out. The ball actually still rolled on the poison highway lead. So there's a girl was face was hit by the ball and then immediately <laughs> unpleasant. Yeah. Also, oh boy, this is terrible. <laughs> so. So uh, I forgot the app is. I'm sorry, it's a bit off the topic, but I still don't remember that uh, there's an app on your phone. You can identify the species and report uh, things. Uh, someone, I guess nobody uses it. <laughs> sorry, what? That's right. That's right. I natural. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't remember the format of uh, iNature, but I I do remember uh, uh, I attend a uh, master student thesis, which is iNature as a data set. Uh, so, uh, okay, so that's the, yeah. Actually, let's do this. Uh, write, uh, provide a, uh, uh, Simple Python uh, tutorial to retrieve and plot uh, I naturalist data in Chattanooga. Let's see whether you can do this. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, so, oh, that seems to be reasonable. There is a Pi naturalist library. Okay. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> okay, we'll call I naturist. Wow, the best retreat. Is that what Chattanooga is? Uh, I guess so. Well, if we plot it, we will see that, right? So, and then plot the data. No, that's I copy paste the wrong thing. Oh, I, I clicked the uh, Google Gym. That is interesting. Uh, but this is just plot. I want to, let's overlay it with the city. <coughs> modify, modify the above code to overlay the plot on the map of Chattanooga. 
अच्छा This seem to be reasonable. It's going to call the folding library again. We know the folding library was using in the NYC plot, right? So that seems to be reasonable. Uh, let's try that. Wow, this is Chattanooga. Uh, it is... Uh... Yes, wow. But apparently not many people use iron nature, so the reporting is not a lot. And it also seems to be done in clearly class. What that happened is just one person standing a spot to report multiple species, multiple events. So it, uh, here is the, the person standing in the park, in the Coolidge Park, that's a that's a walk or uh, walking bridge, by the way. Apparently, he reported five. Oh, actually, two. It like two person, three here, and two here. But what is that? <clears throat> oh, there's a ginkgo tree there. There's another. What is that? Almost formula. I don't know what it is. But what's so important? Oh, this is also interactive. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so you can actually, just for the fun of it, you can walk around the UTC campus and report it on iron nitrates and then see whether you can retrieve and update on the plot. And walk around your doors. And if you do it collectively, you can contribute a lot up to this data point, I guess. <laughs> that would be a fun pastime project for you, I guess. <laughs> so. Uh, the, the issue is if it's the one person reported, I can report there's there's a what? A crocodile here. Uh, it's a false reporting. How do we know? <laughs> right. So the, the problem of all this uh, public acceptable crowd, someone needs to verify that. Uh, in this case, yesterday the data, this one person report, do you trust that or not? But either case, it will be interesting, right? So, <clears throat> uh, so maybe maybe someone can write another one uh, through the accessibility. <laughs> so, or you can actually share a Google Map or something. Yeah. So. Okay, I think I have overloaded many of you. <laughs> so, so either you are working on your, uh, on your own or doing some other things. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, what, uh, there's actually a lot of things you can take it back to your room if you like. So, uh, what do you want to do tomorrow? Uh, do you think about the project you want to do so we can start working on it. Or something related to your research project, we can also start that one. That's probably more practical, right? If you are already met with your advisor, you probably know some kind of idea what do you want to do? And we can also start there. So, so think about the uh, today, and you can also uh, email everyone uh, what topic. And you can also email me so so I can be prepared. So, what topic uh, you want to work on? Oh, I know. Tomorrow I need to go over the introduction to machine learning part as well. But other than that, I, I don't have a fixed agenda. Okay, I, I know many of you are very smart students, so uh, you can probably figure many things out on your own anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I don't think I have received all the city training, so I don't need that to be done as quick as possible. So, uh, I think I received eight of nine, but there are 11 students. I don't know who there are the remaining two. So, I know many remaining two. I don't know. <laughs> so, but uh, you, you will, you will, hopefully, you will all get them done. So. 
Okay. Uh, uh, okay, that's our day two. Uh, <laughs> any things you want to, what other things you want to do? Uh, I think about a long memorial weekend plan. Uh, if you have a car, you can organize a group trip. Uh, there's a, I mean, you can walk her around the river. Uh, there's a trail. There's actually many other things. Uh, Chattanooga is a so called historic city. Uh, when I first come to Chattanooga orientation, I think the faculty in history or uh, they give a lot of uh, history book actually wrote by themselves. <laughs> it's very impressive though. <laughs> so with all those pictures. But I I'm not sure many of you really interested in history. <laughs> so, <laughs> I do uh in fact uh, I walk around in some city and you see the so Chattanooga is a is very important strategic city in the U.S. Civil War. In the U.S. Civil War, uh, the pop, I'm not sure many of you heard that there were there is a Sherman's match to the sea, and that started in Chattanooga. So <clears throat> I know this because I live on the place called Signal Mountain, and in the Signal Mountain there is a Signal Point. That's where the Union Army was. Trapped in Chattanooga by the Confederates, but the only way they can pass a message out is through these uh, signals. <laughs> but in the older days, everybody can see, so you have to encrypt it. So they have this uh, a place every day they turn it, so the code changes everything. And hopefully, the, the person on that side is turned at the same pace, <laughs> so you can understand it. It's called signals, and that's the place uh, I live. But the, the point is that the Chattanooga in the Civil War is a major place. You see there's a bridge on the river. If you, on the side of the bridge, you see some picture image. You wonder why this bridge is built there because during the Civil War, they, some, there are still some old pictures. They built what they call pontoon bridge. So they, when they built that, they, they also pile up a lot of dirt. And then later on, it's easier to build a bridge. It's yeah, already a pile of dirt there. <laughs> so that's some of the bridge I built that later. Yeah. So the, the main market street during the Civil War is probably all bumped down because the Confederate is just across in the, I don't know which side of it. It's the, now it's the company called Blue Cross Blue Health and so it's, it's probably not correct. So that's the hill where the Confederates put the, all the cannons there that outside of the market street. Everything still still away. <laughs> so the, 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 the funny part is uh, many of my students, the uh, graduate from here, they work at a group called Blue Shoe or they visit here. But also, they still have some cannons. Not sure it's a real In some of the trails, when I first came to Chattanooga, I remember one time my, my daughter, my family tripped, walked on the trail with a stone plate. It says, at this place, 200 Confederate soldiers fought to the last man standing against 1,000 Union soldiers. It is in the first day. It's, well, it's, you, you see the, uh, <laughs> that's not it. But you walk around, you see the real life. And there's a mountain called Lopes on the mountain. And that's the place I think the, the union was took the there for a long time. But the, the path to the Lopes on the mountain is so narrow. And the, I think the Sherman was asking why that cannot take it. He had several divisions against that. He said, yeah, there are several divisions there. At the front, only like 10 people can walk through it. <laughs> so, you have all those people, but you just cannot walk through it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, in fact, the, at Chattanooga, Ulysses Grant, the, the general who, which later became the president, he was almost captured. He said, so, apparently, he, he stayed in a place and some local told the confederate, 
you miss his gun in here. And they send the cavalry raid had to capture him. And apparently, for some reason, he left. He left like two hours later, the, the Confederate uh, cavalry raid arrived. So he, if he left two hours later, he will be captured. <laughs> so, there is actually some story around this area. Yeah. So, so if you think he will, if he will be captured, uh, he left, the story may change. <laughs> so it seems uh, in history, almost if you let GPT, GPT rewrite it, you may come up with a different story. <laughs> Sorry, that's a joke. Yeah. So it's some very interesting. So there are some places called Missionary Hill. Now you, you walk there in the school, there's all this, but the, in Civil War, a lot of people died. That's the, the I think that the photo here at Lokan Mountain, also a lot of people died there. So, so anyhow, but, uh, I'm, I'm not, I realize I'm not a regular person. I read a lot of history, data, but many other people, they don't even care, including my wife and the kids. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yeah, so when I, when I visited the, the school mission, it's now a uh, high school, middle school. So we visited there for a graduation ceremony. And I look at, oh, this is missionary uh, region, blah, blah, blah. And my wife was like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess those who are online, yeah, we, we are done for the day, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, Abby, are you still there? Oh yeah, no, nobody is here. Huh? Yes, thank you. Oh yeah, you guys still there? Sorry. <laughs> okay, bye now. Yeah, yeah you, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So. <laughs> tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, am I still recording? So